Hi, my name is John Savage, and if you clicked on this link, then I believe that God wants to speak directly to you today. It's a blessing and an honor to talk with you. Now, really quickly, I want you to close your eyes and imagine you go to sleep tonight and you take your very last breath. You never wake up. If this happened to you, do you know where you would go when you die? If tonight was your last night, are you 100% certain of where you would go? If you can't answer this question, or you think that you might go to hell, then this video is for you and you need to watch it all the way to the end. I want you to be sure that you are going to heaven after you die. Let's face it, even if you don't die tonight or you don't die unexpectedly by some freak accident, we are all going to die. The death rate for humans around the world is 100%. The Bible says there has been an appointed time that every man and woman shall die. After we die, we're going to have an appointment with God. I'm going to have an appointment with God. Are you ready to meet God? Don't scroll away because by the end of this video, you can be certain that you are going to heaven. You can be ready for your appointment with God. Don't get to the end of your life and wish that you had taken the time and the opportunity to get saved by watching this video. See, when we die, we don't go to purgatory. We don't get reincarnated into a butterfly or an elephant. We don't become like ghosts. We don't just rest in peace and just go to sleep. We will either go to heaven in peace and joy for eternity with Jesus, or we're gonna go to a place called hell for eternal punishment. That's what the Bible says hell is, eternal punishment. Eternity means forever. So once you go to hell, there's no getting out of it. Eternity is a very, very long time. That is why it is so important to give your life to Jesus Christ while you're still living here on the earth. I'm gonna take you all the way back. See, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. He created everything and he wanted to enjoy it with somebody, so he created us. God created Adam and then from Adam, he created Eve. Adam and Eve were the first people on earth. They walked with God, they talked with God, they communed with God. However, Eve was deceived by Satan and Adam and Eve sinned. Through their sin came death and destruction, sickness and disease, pain and sorrow, depression, anxiety, and every bad thing under the sun. John 10:9 says that the devil comes to steal, kill, and destroy. The devil wants to kill you. He wants to steal from you and he wants to destroy your life. He wants you to be dead physically and spiritually. That's his nature and that's his ultimate goal. That's what he's been doing from the dawn of time since he first entered the world through Adam and Eve's sin. However, Jesus came to give you life and life abundantly. God did not and does not want sin to destroy your life or anybody's life. Romans 3.23 says that all have sinned and all have fallen short of the glory of God and the wages of sin are death. Without Jesus, we will all go to hell. John 3.16 says that for God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son for whoever that believes in him would not perish but have eternal life. See, God wants to be in relationship with you. God wants to talk with you, walk with you, commune with you. He wants to live with you like it was originally designed in the garden. He's a good father. He sent his only son to die for you, to take your place for your punishment so that you don't have to. Jesus died the worst death on the cross so that you could have eternal life. Remember, Jesus came to give you life and give you life abundantly. 
when you give your life to Jesus, you will start living a life of abundance. This is a gift freely given. It won't cost you a dime. It's free. All you have to do is believe in your heart and have faith. I pray that you would make the decision and walk with me through these next steps. If you haven't made that decision, then make it right now. Give your life to Jesus. Don't wait and don't scroll away. It's too important. You might ask, John, how do I get saved? Or John, there's no way I can get saved. I've done too many bad things. Well, let me tell you, I've been in your same shoes. 10 years ago, I wasn't saved. I was living a life of partying, drugs, alcohol, sexual impurity, everything under the sun. But Jesus came to me and changed my life in an instance. So you ask, how do you get saved? It's literally as easy as A, B, C. A, all you have to do is admit that you're a sinner, that you've sinned and you've fallen short of the glory of God. B, you just have to believe in your heart that Jesus died on the cross and rose from the grave. And C, confess with your mouth that Jesus Christ is Lord and Savior. 1 John 1.9 says that if we confess our sins, he is faithful to forgive us of all of our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. You can be sure that if you confess your sins that Jesus is faithful. He will forgive you of every single one of your sins and cleanse you from all of your unrighteousness. Romans 10.9 says that if you believe in your heart and you confess with your mouth, so if you believe in your heart that Jesus died and rose again and you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and Savior, you will be saved. Hallelujah. That's all it takes. Just believe in your heart that Jesus died and rose from the grave and confess with your mouth that he is your Lord and Savior and you will be saved. Ephesians 5.8 says, For it is by grace you have been saved through faith. So it's the grace of God that you're saved, but by your faith. I can't do it for you. I can't get you saved. You have to believe and you have to confess. If you take this step of faith and say this prayer and believe in your heart, then you will be saved. If you clicked on this video today because you wanted to be saved and you want to be sure that you're going to make heaven, or maybe you just clicked on this video because you were curious, but now after watching, you've decided that you want to be saved, or three, you once lived for the Lord, but you have turned away, you've backslidden, and you've been living a life of sin, but you want to come back to him, then say this prayer with me. Wherever you are, even if you're in a public place, I want you to raise your hands in the air and pray this prayer with me. Don't pay attention to whoever's around you or whatever's going on around you. This is between you and Jesus. I'm going to lead you through the prayer of salvation. Just repeat after me. Say, Dear Father, I admit that I have sinned. I am in need of a Savior. I confess my sins and I ask for forgiveness. I believe in my heart that Jesus died and rose again. I confess with my mouth that Jesus Christ is Lord. I receive your forgiveness. I am a new creation. I turn my back on sin. I turn my back on my old way of living. I choose to follow Jesus and live my life for the kingdom of God. Come into my life, Jesus, and fill me with the Holy Spirit. If you prayed that prayer, then congratulations, you are saved. You are now a part of the family of God. Hallelujah. The Bible says that all of heaven rejoices when one sinner repents and turns to the Lord. Right now, 
All of heaven is rejoicing because you prayed that prayer. Now that you're saved, there are a few things you need to know about being a Christian. The Bible says in 2 Corinthians 5.17, Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. Old things have passed away and all things have become new. You are now a new creation. I want you to no longer identify with your old self. You are no longer a sinner. You're no longer a heathen. You're no longer what everybody says you once were. Your old way of thinking won't work anymore. The Bible says you now have the mind of Christ. 2 Corinthians 5.21 says you are the righteousness of God. I want you to claim your new identity. I want you to say right now, I am a child of God. I am the righteousness of Jesus Christ. That's the truth. All my old ways are gone and I'm going to live a new life free in Christ. Secondly, now is time to draw the line in the sand and leave your past behind. Serve the Lord wholeheartedly in everything that you do. That might mean not hanging around some of the same people you used to. That might mean not hanging around some of the same places you used to. That might even mean, for some of you, finding a new job. I don't know. You can no longer live the life you used to live. The Bible says that we are to be transformed by the renewing of our mind and not conformed to the ways of the world. Lastly, you need to get plugged into a good church. A good, Bible-believing, Holy Spirit-filled church. I cannot stress this enough. Do not go to some dead church. You need to go to a church that preaches the full, true gospel with power and demonstration. If you need help finding a good local church, please reach out to me and I'll do the best I can to try to point you in that direction. If you're in the Dallas-Fort Worth area, then please go to Revival Today with Pastor Jonathan Shuttlesworth. This is a tremendous, tremendous church. If you prayed this prayer today, then congratulations. I want to let you know that I'm very proud of you and I'm super happy for you. If you prayed the prayer today, I want you to like this video and subscribe to my channel because I would love to connect with you. Please share this video with anybody you know that needs help or someone that you would love to get saved to. Maybe a friend or a family member, anybody that you want to see in heaven. I'm so thankful that you watched this video all the way through. Subscribe if you want to see more videos like this or if you would like to be discipled by me. I love you and I'll see you next time. Be blessed.